Okay, in this series of videos, we'll be going over the basics of atomic force microscopy on our Bruker Dimension Icon AFM. I'll point out that we have a wiki page for our AFM on our KNI Lab Wiki. And if you scroll down on that page, you'll find all the resources for the AFM, including a look at the different standards that we have. We'll be taking a look at the surface topography reference in these videos. And also, I'll point out our SOPs and troubleshooting guide. If you're at the AFM and you open up Chrome, it will automatically open up the short version SOP, the long version SOP, the troubleshooting guide, the other content for other equipment in the KNI lab, and the help guide for the dimension icon. Okay, and with that, we'll go out to the desktop. I'll point out these are all the different applications that you need in order to do work on our AFM. We have our scanning software and our analysis software and the help guide for the scanning software and the help guide for the analysis software. These are very, very helpful. And we'll begin by opening up Nanoscope 9.4. When you open it up, it'll ask you to select your experiment. Today we'll be doing a scan assist experiment, which utilizes peak force tapping mode. We'll be doing a scan assist in air group experiment, and we'll be using the KNI scan assist in air experiment itself. If you want to do tapping mode, then you would choose tapping mode. You can do tapping mode in air or fluid. Uh, in our lab, we mostly do air. And then you can choose, say, soft tapping or standard tapping. We also have other kinds of scanning probe microscopy available. We can click this electric and magnetic experiment category. Uh, we can choose piezo response microscopy, or we can click here and choose, say, magnetic force microscopy, and it'll tell us what we need to do in order to do that type of microscopy. All right, so we'll do scan assist, scan assist in air, K and I scan assist in air, and load the experiment. Here it's setting up the controller. Okay, and once that's all set, the first thing we'll do is we will set the display directory. And today we're going to display the directory that's video demo, so we'll say okay to that. And then we'll also want to set the capture directory. So this will set where the scans that we save, where they go, and that will also be video demo. So once we have that set up, now we're going to basically go in order down the left panel here. So we'll begin with setup, and we'll do these in order. The first thing to do, though, is to confirm that our probe is properly loaded. So I don't have a video showing how to do all the loading of the probe and loading the probe onto the scanner and handling the scanner. You'll want to talk to lab staff about how to learn to do that safely. But once you do have the probe loaded into the scanner, we'll want to confirm that it's in the right position. So you can do that by zooming all the way out digitally and choosing a good amount of illumination. And we want our probe to be about one quarter of the way in from the right side of the screen when we're fully digitally zoomed out. If your cantilever is forward, maybe over here or here, that means that your probe slid forward in the probe holder and you'll want to take it out and reset it. Okay, with that said, we'll now select the probe and we're using a scan assist air probe. It's listed first and then everything else is listed alphabetically. This is the one that we'll use for peak force tapping mode. And then we'll enter a serial number for ourselves. So K and I S A for scan assist. It's my ninth pack and the second probe in that pack. And we're using the recommended probe holder, the DAFM CH. That's just the standard probe holder. We'll return and save changes. Okay, and next we'll click to move to the alignment station and say yes, that we're not using the fluid cantilever holder, which would otherwise be incompatible and unsafe to move to the station with. And over here we see this is the alignment station and it's moving directly underneath the scanner. And then the scanner will start to lower until it gets exactly one millimeter from the top of the station. The station itself is basically a reflective plane and it's a way for us to ultimately visualize where the laser is with respect to the cantilever. Now this is the objective lens for the optical microscope. We're gonna see that's going to push in once this gets to one millimeter. And as the objective lens pushes in, we see it goes from an image directly of the cantilever to a silhouette image of the cantilever. And it's this silhouette image that ultimately allows us to visualize the laser and position it onto the cantilever, which we'll do very shortly. Now I'll just point out, if you get to the alignment station and you don't see the silhouette image, 
you can always play with your focus controls. So for instance, I can go back up and go to the image where we were looking directly at the cantilever like we were before. And then you can play with those focus controls and go and find the silhouette. If it's out of focus, you can always digitally zoom in, lower the speed and get a nice sharp focused image of the silhouette of the cantilever. Now from here, we'll steer the laser to the end of the cantilever. And to show you how that works, we can look at the long version SOP. This schematic shows that we're going to use the top two knobs on the top of the scanner to steer the laser until it bounces off the end of the cantilever. It'll come up at an angle through this lens where it bounces off these series of mirrors and hits the middle of the four quadrant detector. And in order to properly steer it to the middle of that detector, we will use these two side knobs to adjust this mirror position. Okay, so we'll go back into nanoscope. Now I will grab the top two knobs and you can see this one moves the laser horizontally, this one moves it vertically. So I'll first steer it to the end of the cantilever where I think that the tip is. It's usually right at the end there. And once I have it there, we are going to then move it again in the X and Y to maximize this sum signal. So I'll move it in the Y and maximize, see maybe the best I can do is about 4.7 and then move it left and right. And maybe the best I can do is about 4.7879, something like that. Okay, now that the laser is positioned on the cantilever, the next thing we want to do is to drive the red dot to the center of the four quadrant detector. So I'll grab the two side knobs and first steer it to the center. And then once it's there, I want to fine tune it such that these two voltages are within plus or minus 0.1 volts. So maybe something like that will do. Now the very last thing that I'll say is that if the red dot seems to be pinned to the perimeter of this, then what you want to do is look directly at the laser in this window on the scanner. So if it's pinned to the corners or the sides, then it's probably not very well positioned. So you would first use the side controls to steer the laser to the center of this window. So it looks something like this. And once it's there, that should release the red dot from the perimeter so that you can then steer it to the center as I just did. Oh, and don't worry if the sum signal decreases as you move the red dot to the center. There's no need to iterate the process. Just do this once and do this once and you're done. Okay, so now that we're all set, we're going to click to return from the alignment station. This will take us back to the sample analysis position, which is where we came from at the beginning of the video. So it raised the scanner up and now is bringing the sample back and then it's moving the objective lens again. So now that we're getting a picture directly of the cantilever itself. Now this is the important part where we want to focus so that we get an in-focus image of the cantilever. And what this ultimately does by telling the microscope where objective lens focus is focused on the cantilever, it can then calculate what it needs to do to change the focus so that it's focused on something one millimeter below the cantilever. Uh, remember at the alignment station, the station itself was one millimeter below the cantilever. So everything that we're doing in the setup is basically to tell the microscope how to set up such that our cantilever will be one millimeter above a focal plane so that when we go over to your sample and start to lower the scanner, when your sample is in focus, we know we'll be one millimeter above so that when we later hit the engage button, we'll be able to safely engage to the sample. Okay, so once that's in focus, the very last thing that we do here is single click on where we think the tip is, and this red cross will end up being a proxy for where we try to land the cantilever once we're on top of your sample. All right, and that will conclude setup. In the next video, we'll go and start with navigate.